I may or may have not put myself into a far greater dilemma than what I normally was originally with the control setup. So I'm gonna go have to relearn this game from scratch, it looks like. All right. Hello everyone, GBA049 here, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Metroid Prime Hunters in the Metroid Prime Marathon series, episode number 18. Gonna, ex gonna go explore a little bit more inside the Celestial Archives, which also means going back to the same place of where we left off, on foot. And while we're on our way over there, as much as it pisses me off, there's only one... There's only one option available in the game that allows you to save and that is by going to the is by going back to your gunship that's literally the only option you have available to uh to um to save your game you can't oh yeah another thing another thing that doesn't make any fucking sense whatsoever the start menu does not have the options it's in the gunship for some odd reason so if so if you're not very comfortable playing this game on default controls, go back to your fucking gunship and do it there. What were they thinking with that? They clearly weren't whatsoever. So uh, this uh, new control setup that, that I'm using is uh, as follows. L for shoot, R for jumping, the buttons to maneuver the aiming reticle and uh, everything else is uh, on the touch screen, but I don't really have to like use the stylus for that. I can just I can just tap it, and we can just ball right there. Uh, didn't you already teach me that though? Oh boy, this is gonna be extremely awkward for me. That feeling when uh, using the stylus is a lot more uh, is a lot more somehow comfortable than using buttons but uh but so far this is okay it's okay it's acceptable but uh i'm still trying to get used to it it's a lot better than just like uh just basically turning your left hand numb just by holding the uh just by holding the side of the side of my 3ds and meanwhile i'm doing everything else with my right hand with a stylus like literally the only thing that literally the only things that I'm doing on my left hand is uh is the analog stick to move around and the L button to shoot. Yeah, that's not comfortable at all. Oh yeah, and those uh and those repetitive boss fights are going to be are going to be one hell of a doozy to get through as well. <laughs> well, anyway, now that we've arrived back to uh, the uh, location of where we fought the Psycho Bits, but not exactly uh, Candon yet, let's go. Uh, let's go retrieve the uh, the remaining. Let's go retrieve the remaining Olympic artifact and uh, and get our first treasure to uncover there in the Celestial Archives. Let's take care of this guy real quick. A lot more durable than usual, that's surprising. And while we're on our way there, I'd like to uh, like talk about a few things on, on what I think about the Olympic Cluster itself as a race. It is, okay, in my opinion, the Olympic, uh, the Olympic Cluster, or just, or, or, or just the Olympic uh, race, uh, Olympic race as a whole, is on par with the Luminoth and, I guess to an extent, simultaneously, the Chozo, when it comes to being so fucking intelligent, it's scary. But, also, subjectively speaking, the Olympics are so damn intelligent that they don't actually pose a threat to the galaxy. Subjectively, for me, the, okay, the Olympic tribe, in my opinion, I've said that, I, I, I was opinionated, opinionated, three times over let me just let me just paraphrase this okay so to keep it short the Olympic tribe is essentially the giga chads of the uh, races in the Metroid series why do I say that you ask it's because of one thing 
the Olympic tribe is so intelligent, so smart, and so powerful to the extent that uh, they create so many dist like overly destructive weapons of war, not for conquering, but for self-defense for their own people and their home planet. That deserves a lot more respect, honestly. And it just goes to show that that, that the Olympic tribe, uh, 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 Olympic tribe, Olympic tribe themselves, are very underrated. I mean, you don't really like see them except in the end of the game. But uh, f but from the but from the information that you gather in Alinos, which we will get to, actually, after when we get the last, uh, after when we get the last, um, uh, the last uh, Olympic artifact. The, the information that you receive in Alinos is pretty fucking interesting. Like, I always enjoy reading the uh, backstory, well, not exactly backstory, but uh, the, um, the uh, origins, details, information, data, the lore behind the, uh, behind the Olympics is very fascinating. Extremely fascinating. And I, and it's, it's, it's everything that it's everything that, that you'd ever want to like uh, learn about in a Metroid game, and that's what this game succeeds tremendously well on, with the story-related aspects, like uh, connections with uh, connections with the Olympic tribe, connections with the, I guess to a certain extent the planets that you the planets that you examine, and space stations of course, and also the main threat that is pursuing the Olympic cluster itself. Goria, which we will get to by the time we arrive in Alinos. That's where everything begins to unfold, slowly unravel as you progress in this game. Yep, it's a lot more comfortable than it was in the last episode. Hallelujah! I guess it was, I, I guess it really was like, uh, n not exactly a uh, Mission Impossible after all. It was completely possible in, from the very beginning. Olympic Turret Version 1. A mounted gun equipped with infrared motion detection and DNA identification technology. This weapon will fire on any non olympic creature within its range. Let me just use my, uh... Is there another one over here? Yeah, there is. Those two turrets were securing the, uh, locked door over here. I wonder if there's anything else that I'm missing in, uh, these... Repetitive layout hallways. I'm just glad that, uh, I'm just glad that, that, that the overall repetitiveness in the Celestial Archives just lessens, just lessens, uh, by the time when you, like, uh, go more deeper into the place. But it comes at a price of, uh, platforming. Platforming against, uh, insta-kill, uh, insta-kill bottomless pits, which is always nice. Ship deck portal activated. Oh, right, I completely forgot all about this. The portal devices that for quicker navigation. Teleport teleportation device online. Step into the portal to warp to another location and go straight to your gunship if you want to like uh, like you know go through the lower pieces that you've, that you've collected so far in your adventure. Change the options or save the game. Yellow force field. Analysis indicates the force field is impervious to most weapons. A high voltage weapon may damage its guard node. Not 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 damage it, just guard node. Ow. Yeah, and they hit pretty friggin' hard. You gotta hand it to the Olympics when it comes to their, like, uh, like, when it comes to their defensive technology, because it is straight up fucking deadly. Case in point with the little guard nodes that is, like, uh, blocking access to areas that he can't, that, blocking access to areas that, that he can't reach yet until you get this, get a specific weapon for it. Also, this room, uh, really confused me when I first played this game, because I had absolutely no idea where the hell to jump to, because the graphics kind of, like, uh, mess with my, uh, a depth perception a little bit here and there, but uh oh. Um, what are we fighting here? Oh, wait, never mind. Northwest Power Node Conduit. This projectile sensitive switch is used to transfer energy into this room. 
Well, there's another uh, Olympic artifact right here. Binary subscripture artifact contains the precise frequency of the stronghold portal's spectral transponder, allowing anything within the teleportation matrix to warp from one point to another. Binary... wait, what? Binary subscripture. Like, can you just call it, like, a teleportation, uh, hint system, I suppose? Actually, no. Why would you want a hint system in this game? Northeast power conduit. This projectile system switches to transfer energy into this room. And there's, like, f there's two other ones over here. Let me just scan that real quick. Southeast. And last one, southwest. And by doing that... Oh, wait. We're, oh, wait. We're supposed to fire at it. Boop, boop. Boop, boop. Boop, boop. There we go. There we go. Now I get a shield key. I think it's what it's called. Shield key? Yeah, shield key. All right. Last Olympic artifact in this in this in this uh, area of the Celestial Archives, and in doing so. Portal activated. Long-range thermomagnetic resonance scanners indicate remote and inaccessible chambers. Use the portal to access the inaccessible. It cannot be accessed until you have all three uh, Olympic artifacts. And we're going to fight our first boss, a Cretophid. Teleportation device online. Step into the portal to access the inaccessible. Where exactly uh, the uh, t where exactly the teleportation device leads us to is anyone's guess because it looks like to me that this is uh, in a part of the oubliette, like like through the infinity void, like every single uh, every single sacred treasure and artifact that, that the Olympics uh, secure with uh, three other artifacts uh, scattered in, in the planet. And also the three keys securing the securing the locks of the artifacts. There's a lot of protection. There's a lot of defense. Like a lot of, you know, like completely necessary. I will I will say, uh, you know, you know, guidance and and, and like uh, the, the protocols that, that that the Olympics go through to protect what is rightfully theirs to not fall in the hands of evil. Anyway, uh, this place uh, is, is is extremely similar to uh, to what you witness inside the uh, in the oubliette in the Infinity Void, so my guess is that every single uh, every single hidden treasure uh, that is uh, the, the Octolith, is, is what they're called, by the way. Every single Octolith is hidden inside a different part of the oubliette in the Infinity Void. But he just don't access it because it's all locked up and uh, sealed away by other means. And here we go. Fancy door. Can I actually scan the door? Yes, I can. Stronghold door. This door is synchronized with Stronghold Portal Security Protocols. Status. Minimal shielding. Thank God I don't have to look for three keys to open another door. That would be hell. And a highly detailed cutscene plays in here, too. For every single boss that, that, that the Olympics have to protect, to protect each of their octoliths, it's a gigantic dick tower. That's all that the creative fits are. Thankfully, this one is a lot easier than the other ones because it gets difficult and it gets difficult the the uh, the, the uh, further you go into the game the last one is a pain in the fucking ass and I hate it Creativid version 1 utilizing the most sophisticated Olympic cybernetics this massive cylindrical defense mechanism features precision chemical lasers the Creativid is a key component of Olympic military defense technology designed to safeguard the Olympics most sacred objects all right, let's go. So the object of this is to attack each and every, uh, each and every one of the, uh, blue weak points. Like, you know, just literally, like, you know, pl plastered all over the Creedifid. And in doing so, I don't exactly know what it is that pops up out of the top, but that's, but that's the, uh, the, uh, 
that's the uh, weakest spot of the creative fit, and you're supposed to like go guns blazing on that. And when and when, and when you do that, while also being careful. Oh God. Okay. Uh, this is this is definitely gonna go take some time for me to get used to just like pressing buttons to aim instead of like using the touch screen I'm kind of used to that For once I'm actually used to that Maybe it's like lower the sensitivity. Yeah for one thing I didn't do that Oops uh, Where's the other weak spot? Uh, seriously, where's the other weak spot? I can't find it. Oh there it is. Oops. Alright, so we're going to phase two of the creative fit. Okay, so approaching too close to the creative fit damages you. That's not good to know, that's terrible. I should probably be careful because I'm gonna die soon. This is not good. Okay. I'll just be more careful here. Maybe we should like uh, switch, like uh, switch control schemes each time about when I'm about to fight a boss, N not actual, not like uh, not like major, N not like uh, minor enemies. Yeah, I'm gonna do that from now on. It's gonna be it's gonna be a total slog fest just to like uh, to just do that every single time. But uh, I have no other choice. It's either comfort or discomfort. I cannot have both. That's not good. That's not good at all. Uh, can you like give me some uh, HP, please? How is that hitting me? I might die soon. Uh, we can clutch this. We can clutch this off. How is it hitting me? Seriously, how the fuck is that hitting me? I don't understand. I'm gonna die here anyway. Yeah, there's no way I'm gonna survive this. There's no way. I might as well just bail. I'm dead. I'm so dead. What HP? Yeah, no, I'm dead. Yeah, I can't do this. Alright, back to arthritis. It's a good thing that uh, the uh, teleportation device outside of the, uh, outside of the inaccessible is, uh, accessible. So we can go back to our ship and change the options there. Another issue. That I didn't even know existed. Okay, where's the uh, where's the portal? No, oh, it's down here, of course. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention there's actually fall damage in this game too. Not as much, but it's kind of weird how it has that of all things. All right, so I'm only going to uh, use the um, I'm only use. I'm only going to use uh, the uh, touchscreen controls for boss fights and uh, the um. Oh God, I just realized. When I go further, I'm gonna have to keep on switching. I have to, I have to, I have to either a get good with the uh, get good with the um w with the button maneuverability, or just. 
constantly switch between, uh, you know, control setups every single time when I'm about to encounter a guardian. Alright, let's switch to this. There we go. I had no idea that save button was on there the entire time. Anyway. Alright, getting the handy dandy stylus out. And just going back to, uh, the old grind. Let me just, like, let me just rest my, uh, yeah, I'm gonna rest my, rest my knee on here. Much easier. Alright. Ah, uh, it's, it's, it's not gonna do any, not gonna do any wonders for my back. Oh my god. This is not comfortable at all. Alright. Let's go. I feel like one of the most uncomfortable, uh, the, uh, the most uncomfortable, uh, control setup is also the most easiest. How do you even do that? Now well, they manage, but, oh my god. It's so hard. The biggest challenge of, of Metro Prime Hunters is, like, enjoying it. Like, enjoying the controls. I still can't get over that GameSpot actually, like, uh, gave a, um, gave a, uh, gave a positive uh, outlook of the uh, controls for Metro Prime Hunters for, quote, surprisingly fluid and precise controls once you get used to them. I never get, I'm, I never, I'm never going to get used to the controls of Metro Prime Hunters. It's just not designed well. It may be literally made for the DS, but, on, but at the exact same time, it's not made for it. I don't know if that makes sense, but... It's just how I feel. Anyway, we scan the Creatifid. The first of many. But the right method. There we go. Enough damage to go to the face, too. So that it can't actually, like, uh, go guns blazing on the entire thing until, uh, 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 like, you know, just deplete the entire health bar in one session, but no. It has segments. Oh, hello. I have no idea what the hell is hitting me, but uh, I guess it has splash damage. Oh, God. Oh, now it gives me freaking ammunition. Where the hell were you when I needed you? Gone. Reduced to atoms. I wonder if I can scan this. Uh, no, it's the same thing. There we go, finally got it. Okay. I can't even imagine doing a no damage run of Metroid Prime Hunters. Only a masochist would be, would like, you know, put themselves up the torture of such a ridiculous quote unquote challenge. How is that still hitting me? What the hell? Alright. It's literally just the incinerator drone, but more fire and plasma. And what, is it just me, or, or does the Creatifid have some sort of sentience? It sounds like a creature when it's, when it's being damaged, which is odd. Got it! Alright, that's the first of four Creatifids taken care of. Now I need to get the hell out of here. And that's, and, and here is the other issue. That Metro Prime Hunters has. Also, for some reason, you cannot absorb the energy uh, spheres with the charge beam. You have to pick them up manually. Because that makes sense. Let me just take these. Definitely gonna go... Gonna need this when I'm, when I'm escaping the damn place. 
And here is what the creative fit has been protecting, an octolith. Carbon analysis indicates octoliths are limbic in origin. Fancy cutscene when you wait, fancy cutscene when you collect one too. She just absorbs it. Digitally downloaded like missiles, I suppose. You have obtained an octolith. And apparently, Samus's uh, power suit automatically un automatically knows what it is. It's like, like when you scan it, it just tells you what it is. Like an unknown device. Maybe we're just gonna go like uh, learn what it is by the time you pick it up. It wasn't the case in Prime Two. Probably because it was foreign. Gunship transmission. Octolus may be the key to the ultimate power alluded to in the telepathic message. And that information is going to be leaked to, and going to be leaked and received by the other bounty hunters in the game. For whatever reason, every single time when you pick up an octolith in uh, the inaccessible uh, portal locations, when you're about to leave, I don't know why, a uh, defense mechanism. Uh, it, okay, I don't even know why. I don't even know what causes this. Every single time you pick up an octolith, the entire area um, basically becomes a death hazard. And if you do not, if you do not like escape to your gunship before time runs out, you just die for some reason. I don't know what in the hell causes Samus to die when time runs out when in every in each one of these like uh you know notorious escape sequences. But it just goes to show that uh, of how overprotected the Limbic tribe is with their Octolith taken. That's what that's what they're saying. Octolith taken. Security protocol initiated. Evacuate immediately. And so it begins. The first of, I don't know, 16 escape sequences in Metroid Prime Hunters. And the worst part about it is, you have to take the long way out. There is no shortcut. There are no shortcuts allowed when you're, uh, when you're trying to escape every area in Metroid Prime Hunters. You have to take the long way because for whatever reason the tel the, because for whatever reason the teleport systems are inactive. Probably because that uh Switch is not receiving power. My guess is that the Olympics are like uh still alive, uh s like somewhere in some way. That they're trying to like uh halter your progress of escape as much as possible because they don't know what you're doing. Until you uh, go to uh, confront Goria yourself. All right. Good thing there's no psychobits to worry about in there. Now there are a hell of a lot more psychobits in here. Interesting, uh, interesting, uh, instrument choice, uh, uh for, uh, the, the escape sequence music. Bongos. Yeah, just put in bongos in here, of all things. I don't even know if I'm going the right way. Let's see. I got, I got time to spare, anyway. Is it this way? Nope, it's the other way. Fantastic. I think it's this way. No, it's this way. I just got I just got out of that more fall segment, more fall tunnel. Wasn't too sure. Never mind, I'm going the wrong way. Why am I not surprised? Uh, this way I think. Yep, right here. Please let it be the right way. Yep, it is. Lesser Ithrak, go away. I'm ignoring your bitch ass. Left, 
Looks like we don't have a choice. Got him. You were never there the, in the you were never there it you were never there to begin with anyway, so why now? Is mother brain somehow uh is somehow functioning once more in the limit cluster? Is there another mother to worry about in Metro Prime Hunters? No. It's just maybe it's the Octolith doing this. I don't know. Let it go. Drop the fucking artifact. You have no idea what power is contained from this thing. Do you want to find out? Do you sir? Oh no. Another psycho bit. Another type of it. I'm trying to get that one. Uh oh. Wait. Never mind. It, it already gives you the information on, on the psycho bit it, w w when we scan the uh, when we scan the first uh, when we scan the first version of it, which is strange. A lot more durable and annoying. Can I actually run away from these things? No, I have to take care of all the enemies here. Fuck. Just take it. Just take it. I don't care. I don't care how much damage I'm taking here. All this, all that this is doing is just wasting your time. That's all it does. And I hate it. <laughs> All right, this way. Finally. Remember when I first started? Uh, remember when I first started the game, like uh, in, in, in like uh, my second or uh, third uh, profile, or, or like in not profile, like the second or third uh, file of Metro Prime Hunters. I just casually fell through the floor and died in that one room I was just in. It's completely random. On, like, you know, just spontaneously falling through the floor in Metro Prime Hunters. It happens whatever the fuck it wants to. Especially in the most inconvenient times. Especially when you're, like, uh, dealing... Uh-oh. Oh, no. Guardians. Specifically designed to guard the Alembic Order, these automatons are now programmed to serve in its absence. These intelligent androids often travel in packs, attacking with energy projectiles produ produced by three small fusion generators located in the cranium. Uh, let's, I don't have any missiles. Oh god, there's two of them. Oh no. Why do you have to give me fucking three of them? Oh my god, I hate this. Where did you go? Very weird of how the guardians, uh, ha of how the guardians have the silhouette of Samus when they die, and the bongos are playing a lot more aggressively. Which means that you really need to hurry your ass up and get the hell out of here. What's gonna blow up? I don't know. The octolith within Samus that she absorbed? I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. Launch sip. Duh. Uh, before doing that. Better. Okay. Alright, so we uh, access, I'm pretty sure, like, uh, two or uh, three new areas in the in, in the Limit Cluster. Well, obviously, the next destination is Alinos, so... Yep, and there it is. 
I wonder if Cannon's still in the Celestial Archives. Yeah, he is. For whatever reason. You might as well just give up and search for the Octolist by this point, because, uh... It, oh, wait, never mind. He actually ha he actually does have access to the, uh, to the other, like, uh... Octolith location in Celestial Archives because of that freaking power node they can only be destroyed with the Volt Driver. But he's a creature with, uh, he's a creature with, uh, with the lust for power. He doesn't have a brain. He doesn't have a functioning brain of morals. So, let him suffer for as long as he wants to there. Because he ain't smart enough to unlock a door. Or break down a barrier. And look at that. We arrived on Alinos. My favorite area in the game. Well, minus the morph ball uh, maze that that the game throws at you way too early in, but uh, it's the amount of lore that is like scattered everywhere in this place, and it, not to mention that uh, along with uh, along with just about every other track in Metroid Prime Hunters is is remix of uh, well, actually not exactly remix, but um, reimaginings of. Uh, of the uh, Metroid Prime soundtrack, so so in this case, this is clearly it, this is clearly an inspiration of Chozo Ruins. Meanwhile, Arctera, the uh, frigid area, the frigid planet, is is an inspiration to Fendrana Drifts. Celestial Archives, for whatever reason, is an inspiration to um, the uh, wrecked uh, Galactic Federation uh, research. Um, uh, Facility, if you can call it, or like a like a Federation base in Metro Prime Two Echoes, and Vesper Vesper Defense Outpost is completely original. Alinos, the once beautiful planet of Alinos, home to the Alimbic Elders, has fallen into disrepair since the explosion of the planet's core. But we will, like, uh, examine more of this place in the next episode. Because, jeez. There's a lot of stuff to deal with in this game. It's It gets old very quickly. Anyway. Save the game here, and that will have to include the end of this episode right here. So, progress is beginning. We got the uh, first Octolith in its Celestial Archives, and in the next episode, we're going to explore just a little bit of Alinos. So, I'll be looking forward to that, not as much as I am, and I will see you later. Thank you for watching, and I will see you later. This is GBA049, signing out, going offline, and see you next mission.